As you already have been aware from your customer request, the ability to effectively work with REST APIs is becoming more and more critical. REST APIs are becoming a key construct for microservice architectures, data sharing, and to provide content across mobile and web applications. And a majority of the time, there's been a shift from REST APIs returning XML to JSON now. And so JSON data, whether it's simple or complex, can be difficult to work with and generally will require some type of coding in order to parse it and convert it to a format that can be used with SQL-based tools. And so your customers have a few options in front of them. They could code a solution using Python or any other modern language and convert the JSON to a format that can be consumed with ease. They could make use of a web connector SDK and code a solution that may be only relevant for a single API. Or they may want to go back to direct database access, which allows them to fully use their SQL toolbox, but IT doesn't necessarily like this anymore from a governance perspective. And all of these options really require some form of coding, maintenance, time, and are often considered point solutions. So today I'll be going through uh, three different APIs, and I'd just like to really highlight a couple of the great features that we've been we were able to deliver for the autonomous rest connector. So the first API we're going to take a look at is a public API. It's from the United States Geological Survey. And it essentially returns seismic activity for a given set of filters. So if I run this in everybody's favorite API <coughs> application, you can see that I'm I'm getting data for the month of December and I'm returning 2000 records. If we take a look at the JSON data that gets returned, you can just see I have a fairly flat list of key value pairs, and it's not very complex. And I have roughly you know, 2,000 records here, fairly simple. And so one of, the more, one of the more difficult aspects of business analysts, data scientists, or ETL developers that want to leverage the use of Rust APIs is the fact that there is no context behind the data. And that context is metadata. On the surface, everything looks like a string. And even more difficult to detect would be the relationships within the data. And so your customers and our customers as well are used to working with SQL in a tabular or relational format. So how would they go about trying to analyze this data? Well, they would go record by record row by row and column by column and try to understand what they're working with. And so right here, I have that same data in a tabular format and you can see exactly what we were looking at, but instead of, but instead of JSON, it's being returned in a SQL editor. And if you're guessing, well, Ken's probably using autonomous rust connector, you're exactly right. So I'd like to show you how I got there. And so the intelligence sampling is one of the first features I'd like to highlight right away is our connector is able to look at the data returned from the REST API. It can assign column names, table names, data types, and identify relationships within the data. So you can see now we have position, type, magnitude, place, and so on. And you can see their associated data types. And that's a much different view of the data than what we saw getting returned from the JSON. So if I'm a data scientist and I want to work with this REST API, I already have a lot more context of the data. And so with that context, I can submit a SQL query because that is my language of choice. And what gets returned to me are the results from the REST API in my SQL editor using the exact SQL. It's just a simple select statement uh, where alert is not null and the magnitude is greater than five. So these are big earthquakes that we're going to have some type of financial or human impact for the month, month of December. And it looks like it returned about nine results. So super easy to use. And so let us let me show you how fast I can create a connection to a different API, retrieve a different set of data, but use the same SQL query. So I'm going to create a new connection. I've already configured my autonomous rust connector. The, the only two things I really needed to do was supply a location as to where the jar file is located and the driver class. That's what you essentially have to do for any JDBC driver. I'll click next. And the only thing I need to do here is supply JDBC URL. 
click finish. I'm going to run the same exact query that returned nine records. Open up a new SQL editor, paste that same query here, execute it. And so you can see for the month of November, it was a little bit more active. We have 16 records. But within a time frame of 30 seconds, I was able to create a new connection, only supplying a JDBC URL. I was able to supply a SQL query, get that data back. And within that, we were able to sample the data, identify the table names, the relationships within that data, and also the data types itself. And so I want to look at one more query here using the December data. And the only thing I really changed here that I want to highlight is the fact that we have this position. We have this position column. And this is one of those things about our intelligence sampling that I like to highlight is the fact that we added this as a column because we were not able to identify a primary key. So how do you find relatable data within a REST API or any type of SQL query? Is that it usually needs to be some type of primary or foreign key relationship. And since we weren't able to identify any type of relationship, we were able to create a unique column with unique values so that you can write SQL that makes sense, so that there are relationships within the data. And so this is the same one. So very simple, uh, high-level overview of one of the APIs that shows you benefits of how quick and easy it is. I didn't have to write any code and I was able to get up and running within 30 seconds. So let's go a little bit more of a complex scenario. Uh, this is another public API, it's SpaceX. And I remember, I, I hope a bunch of people on the phone have seen this, the, the video where the two boosters were coming back down from uh, the launch and they landed simultaneously on top of a barge in the middle of the ocean. It was amazing and they made it look so easy. And so hopefully I can make this look as easy as well too. And so this is a SpaceX API, it's publicly available and it allows me to get information from uh, SpaceX related to rocket launches, ships, cargo, payload, missions, and so on. And if we take a look, we have about, you know, maybe 9,700 lines of JSON being returned for only about 74 records. So if you're trying to think about how your customers would actually work with this data and how would they analyze that and identify data types and relationships within this data, it's going to be a lot more difficult, especially if I had to code a solution on my own using Python or C Sharp or any other modern day language. And so if we just take a look at a top level record here, you can see that it, it's fairly complex. There's multiple sets of hierarchy here. And so I wanted to show what we do during the sampling process here. So before I do that, there are a couple other options out there available to some of your customers. Uh, one of the options is the fact that you, there are a lot of converters out there that can convert the JSON to a CSV file format. And I did exactly that here. You can see that I've got my 74 records here. And it's great in the fact that it can convert to a CSV format, which can be used with most SQL type based tools, but there's one main ingredient missing. And then if I scroll all the way to the end, all the relation, all the data that contains the relationships is gone. So if you have a report that's doing a join across multiple tables, uh, that's now abstracted out using a REST API, you lose that information. Your SQL, no, the SQL that's being generated, whether it's by your ETL or your BI tool, can no longer work. So let's take a look at what the autonomous REST connector was actually able to do here. So through the sampling process, we just make a single call. It's just a single endpoint that we're doing sampling. We were able to create eight different tables here. Now the table names are dynamically generated based upon our sampling techniques, but the main pair table after doing some quick analysis was uh, V2 launches. And V2 launches will have a bunch of different uh, child relationships with ships, payloads, mission, customers, and cores. And you can see we were able to take this fairly complex format here and identify all those different relationships 
into this relational model. So this is the primary key, and we have a bunch of other different relationships too. But two tables I'd really like to focus on is my customers table, which is a list of all the customers that SpaceX currently has today. We have roughly 85 records here, and also my payloads table. So if I take a look at customers, the metadata for my customers and my payloads table, I can see that there is a relationship between payloads and customers. So what that allows me to do is run a join across this data. And so the great thing about this is that if I do have, some enterprises have hundreds, even thousands of BI reports. Uh, and if they're also going through a modernization effort, they need to ensure that their SQL-based tools can also seamlessly work. And that's what the autonomous Rust connector does, is if, if your software package or portfolio is generating SQL queries and they, they need to start being used against Rust APIs, this will, this will allow you to do just that. Let me just start up my SQL editor really quick here at Crash. That's been happening a couple of times today. So it's a little bit of Moore's Law. All right, great. And so let's just go back to this inner join just to make sure that I can su submit the query so I'm not doing anything <laughs> under the covers here. So imagine if you had a report and you're in SpaceX and you wanted to summarize the total payload that has been launched into space by customer. So I, I'm doing an inner join on both my customers and my payloads table. I'm grouping by the customer and then I'm just ordering uh, using the descending order uh, by payload mass. And so I can submit simple SQL queries. I can submit complex SQL queries. All of that is capable within our SQL engine on the connector. We're, we're totally SQL 92 uh, select compliant. And so that's a great example to show you the advanced techniques that we can do for sampling, uh, creating that metadata, defining those relationships, and allowing you to carry on seamlessly between the SQL world and the Rust API world. Now, the last API I like to take a look at is Yelp. Everybody's heard of Yelp. You can get reviews. You can get location information. You can get uh, ratings on all the different restaurants. And even businesses within your area or any area pretty much across the globe at this point in time. And so I'm, I want to dive a little bit deeper into some of the more advanced features, but still focusing on basically intelligence sampling and relationship identification. But here's where the coalesce aspect comes into play. Many of the times as we talk to customers about this product, they're not going to be working with just a single API. They, they need a way to work with tens, maybe even hundreds of APIs and find a way to sample all that information. And so this is just a very standard configuration file. Uh, the configuration file is just a parameter on the JDBC URL. And you can see that I have three endpoints. This is just key value pairs, table name, endpoint name. So I'm looking at both categories, events, and businesses. And so I can just go into Postman run a quick get on this API, and it looks like we're, we're returning a whole bunch of different lawyers in the town of Cary, North Carolina. That's where I live. And so let's go into my SQL editor. I just wanna show you one thing about the connection string, is if we take a look at this connection string, it shows you this different authentication method that we're using. We have multiple authentication methods, either no authentication, basic, token base, which is what we're using right here, which seems to be a fairly popular method across all these different public and private APIs, and also header-based authentication. And so I'm going to run this select statement, super simple select statement, right? Let's get all the rows getting returned from that API on the businesses table. And you can see that there's a couple parameters here, carry North Carolina and lawyers. Now, the great thing about Autonomous Rust Connector is that we're able to do 
push downs for filters. So a lot of the time in, in the real world is that APIs are parameterized. You need to provide various criteria to change the way you get the data back from the provider. And so this allows us to provide a tool to our customers so that they don't have to create a new connection for every single different set of parameters that they want to work with. We can actually provide pushdown capability, capabilities and also paging capabilities. So very briefly within this configuration file, which gets automatically generated for you, you do not have to hand code this. This is the output from the sampling process. These two fields here, location and category, are pushed down. When they're pushed down, it means that I can use them in a where clause of a SQL statement. And if I run the same query using a filter, keep your eye on this business category column. What we did is we called the same API, but the parameter was the query was parameterized. So instead of using North Carolina, we're now using a different parameter called 27513, which is just the zip code. And the same thing happens with paging. We have a very easy way to tell you tell us how you want the data to be paged, whether it's row-based paging or page number paging. So super easy. So those are really three examples to show you a very low code approach and a high level view of our intelligence sampling so that you can very quickly and easily get up and running and seamlessly work between SQL and REST API.